When you know that when an organic compound has two stereogenic centers, there are four possible stereoisomers. This is just a matter of view, and let's take a look. We'll pick a compound that has two carbons attached to each other. Each has a CH3. Then they have substituents on wedges and dashes. And let's pick hydrogen for the dashes, and bromine, and fluorine for the wedges. We know that this is only one stereoisomer. We could write another by changing the stereochemistry at both centers. And I've changed the stereochemistry at both centers by switching the wedges and dashes, the atoms that are attached to the wedges and dashes. We can get the two other stereoisomers simply by writing this first stereoisomer with its chirality and switching the other stereoisomer chirality. And the fourth one we'll get by changing the chirality at both of those centers. And using the kahn ingold prelog rules, we could assign priority 1 to this bromine priority 2 to this carbon that has a fluorine substituent, priority 3 to this carbon that only has hydrogens attached, and priority 4 to that hydrogen. And when we do that, the lowest priority group is away from us. We can go from 1 to 2 to 3 in a circular manner and see that we're going clockwise and call that R. This is the opposite configuration, so we can call this S. This is the same configuration, so we can call that R. And this is the opposite configuration, so we call that S. Now let's look at the other carbon. Fluorine is the highest priority. This carbon that has a bromine substituent is second. This carbon that has only hydrogens is third. And the lowest priority is hydrogen, and it's sticking away from us. So we're ready to go in our circle from one to two to three, and see that we're going counterclockwise, so this is the S isomer. We've switched it here, so this is R. We switched it here, so this is R. And this is the same as we had over there, so this is S. And to summarize, then, we see that there's an enantiomer that is R and S, and the second enantiomer that is S and R. That's what you expected, isn't it? And we saw that this is R, and R, S, and S. So there's two pairs of enantiomers. I haven't told you anything new. Four stereoisomers altogether. This is the pair of enantiomers. This is the pair of enantiomers. I want to look at the case where we change one small detail. We'll write the structure as fluorine rather than bromine here. And fluorine, like above, this is CH3 and CH3. Now I'm going to systematically write the other stereoisomers just like I did up above. Transpose these and then write the methyl groups. And there are two more, aren't there? We kept this the same and we changed these. These will be just the opposite. So hydrogen will be on the wedge and fluorine back. Fluorine will be on the wedge, hydrogen back. And next, we assign the absolute configuration. We'll move from fluorine to carbon, methyl, clockwise, R, R, S, S. And we move from fluorine to carbon to methyl, one, two, three. This is S, and this is R. This is R, and this is S. This is a pair of enantiomers. This is two views of the same molecule. This has a carbon as R chirality that has fluorine, hydrogen, methyl attached. And this has a carbon with the same chirality, R, fluorine, hydrogen, methyl attached. The other carbon is S, and it has fluorine, methyl, and hydrogen attached. And the other carbon here is S. This has fluorine, methyl and hydrogen attached. These two carbons match up, and these two carbons match up. These are totally, although they're mirror images, they are totally superimposable on each other. They are the same thing. This happens because both stereogenic centers have the same four things attached. 
there is one pair of enantiomers and one other stereoisomer, a meso compound. This is a very special stereoisomer that has in its own molecule one R and one S absolute configuration of the stereogenic center having the same things attached. It is its own mirror image in the same molecule. Those two carbons, those two stereogenic centers reflect into each other. So for that reason, when I make the mirror image of that, I have the exact same molecule. And this is a general phenomenon. When you have two stereogenic centers, they have the same things attached. Rather than have two to the n equals four stereoisomers, you only have three stereoisomers, a pair of enantiomers, the RR and the SS, and a single other stereoisomer. One stereogenic center has the S, one has the R. This is very common. Let me give you two examples that would be interesting to talk about briefly. A compound that has two carboxyl groups, these are carboxylic acid functionalities, and hydroxyl groups on the internal carbons with hydrogens also attached the compound known as tartaric acid. And it was with the ammonium salt of tartaric acid that the first physical evidence of chirality was obtained by separating the enantiomers of the salts of tartaric acid. And in addition, there was a meso compound. The tartaric acid has three stereoisomers because this stereogenic center and this stereogenic center have the same four things attached. You'll also notice that's the case in some cyclic compounds as well as other acyclic compounds. Let's take a look at a five-membered ring. We can make this ring. We can attach substituents. We see that this is a stereogenic center. It has four different things attached. We see that this is a stereogenic center. It has four things attached. But that these two stereogenic centers have the same four things attached. So this will have a pair of enantiomers and a meso compound as the third stereoisomer. This is a general phenomenon. An organic molecule that has two stereogenic centers, having the same thing, four things attached, will have three stereoisomers, not four, a pair of enantiomers and a meso compound.